So today I want to talk about the anniversary event and all the features that you can find therein. And moreover, I want to discuss the problems with all of them because every one of them launched with pretty significant problems that really shouldn't have happened, but did because of the lack of accounting for player scalability and the problems that would arise when the areas became crowded. Basically, it worked fine on the PTR and there's only two or three people around. You get a crowd of 50 people and everything just falls apart. And these things should have been considered ahead of time because this is literally the new content of the patch. Everyone is going to funnel into this area. So the fact these breaking changes were missed is inexcusable, really. And I'm going to go into in them for each feature just to show you what a mess this is. And I hope that it gets cleaned up quickly. I do think it's an awesome event and the features are pretty cool, especially as evergreen content going forward instead of just being one and done like most previous anniversary events. But these issues need to be addressed like yesterday. And I'm going to jump right into the first one, the transmog comp. The first issue, the ribbons have an interact problem. I'm going to show you a feature from my stream earlier. Vote. And note the server lag, everyone running in place. That's another issue I'm going to get into. Probably an achievement for voting or something. I'm not even going to look at who I'm voting for. I'm just going to be like, yeah, this person's good. Invalid target. Probably broken anyway. They all, they're all invalid targets. Three ribbons spawn on a table. The entire server of people that are in your shard have to interact with these objects, and only one person can interact with them at a time. I finally did the ribbon after spending like 30 seconds spam clicking all three of them, trying to get it going. And I was probably making it worse, and so was everyone else there, because everyone was spam clicking it, which would in continue to make it an invalid target for everyone else, because if any one player is clicking a ribbon, no one else can interact with that ribbon. That is a huge problem. And they have the tech to avoid this. They've deployed the tech to evolve, or avoid this since WAD, and they introduced the tech. I remember I talked to someone in QA who was proud with, uh, of the team when they introduced this tech. Tech that allowed everyone to interact with an object at the same time because they make it phased or personal to the player. I forget what they called it. It's like personal something. But these are personal objects to where each person sees a different object as opposed to everyone fighting over the same object. And they see it in the same place. So you click it and you have no issue with interaction. Why they didn't deploy this tech here is beyond me. It's like they think there will only be three players participating in this event. That's a serious flaw that should not have been overlooked. The next issue about this event, I can't really show you here, but this entire area allows toys and mounts. They did bless able certain toys, but not all toys. There's still a lot of disruptive toys you can put here. Like there's people, there'll be people lining up to do transmog comp. You can walk right up to them and drop one of those pads that transform players right under them. Literally just disrupt the transmog comp on purpose and troll players by turning them into something else because you drop the pad that tra transforms them into a random character model. You can also mount up here, and you can use toys that make yourself huge. I actually turned myself into a giant tauren, I mounted a corehound, and took up, took up half the stage. How is that allowed? How do they not think that? Like, this should be a checklist. What can players do to disrupt other players? Or what will happen to systems like this if the area is crowded. Like, basic, this is an MMO. This is like a basic checklist that was utterly failed here. Anyways, moving on to the mount off. The mount off, again, allows disruptive toys and mounts. Here is a disruptive toy crossing a huge bubble. It's an actual swim bubble. So someone can be getting their mount out, and then you just drop this on them, and now all of a sudden that person's swimming, and their mount is canceled. And they just lost the mount, mount off competition because you managed to drop a toy that literally canceled their mount cast. Good job, Blizzard. On top of that, on the Torrin right here, again proving a point. I transformed myself into a super Torrin, so when I mounted up, my mount took up half the screen because I wanted to prove a point. Now, granted, I take a picture when I was mounted because I was actually trying to prove the point without actually disrupting the event. I'm considerate like that. The next issue is that there's supposed to be an extra action button that appears when you do the mount off. Well, it's buggy. It doesn't always appear. So you have to mount up in five seconds by searching for the mount 
that's up here manually. I hope you're a fast typist for some of these mounts and don't have typos. I actually lost not one, but two mount offs because of this bug. I had the mount. I didn't get it out fast enough because I don't type as good as I used to. I can type fast. I can't type accurately and fast. It's either accurate or it's fast. It's not both. So this is the mount off bug. And there's another mount off issue. This event can use mounts that are exclusive to professions. Now, I don't know what class is. I haven't done enough of these to know whether or not they're going to throw Warlock or Paladin mounts in there. God, I hope not. But I have seen tailoring and engineer mounts appear here. And that's screwed up. Like, basically, if you're doing the mount off, your character better be, be have both engineering and tailoring if they have a chance. Because otherwise, you might come in here and get a flying machine and a flying carpet. And you're two mounts less than the competition because you don't have those professions on your main. Again, why? That's not, I wouldn't say that's a bug so much as just a poor design decision. Every mount that's included here should be a mount available to all players. So, not, not, no class specific mounts, no profession specific mounts, no faction specific mounts. It should be mounts that are available to any player. They could be retired mounts. Like, I even see it's fair. Like, pulling out a Zulian Tiger, that's fair. Because it's still an acquirable mount by all players via the black market auction house or whatever or a long boy etc there's they might be super rare but they're not class or profession exclusive so that's the mount off issues the next issue was cho's play i don't have a screenshot of it but cho's play is the third event that's on a rotation to where you basically sit there and listen for a story one major issue when it comes to the world bosses and that's audio ducking Audio ducking is when Blizzard takes certain audio and halts or stops it or mutes it when another audio is played at the same time. What's happening is there's three world bosses in the zone that are constantly yelling all the time. So you can be listening to Cho talk. Cho will be like, once upon a time, oh yes, you were mocked for extermination. And Cho's lines cut off and you don't hear the rest of it. It's not even just talking over it. It's literally the, his line was canceled because Doomwalker or Shaw of Anger start yelling and that's a sh huge problem for someone that's a, like a lore master and actually wants to hear the story now fortunately you can still read it on your screen but still it's just the boss they have they again they have the technology to avoid this they have a ducking technology that a sun, sun engineer told me about where they could literally set the range of how, how far audio is played before it squelched they actually do this specifically in dalaran with ronin speech you don't hear ronin talking if you're more than like 20 meters away from him because that pissed players off to hear him all the time, unless uh, all, all citywide. So they changed it so you can only hear him if you were standing right next to him. Like literally, you could be 20, 20 yards, or meters, whatever you want to call it, away, and you don't hear him anymore. The world bosses need the same thing, although maybe not set to 20. They should probably set to about 50. So you at least get some. Because they actually made this mistake, which is even more funny, is Doomwalker, before this patch, his audio duck range was about 20 meters. It was too short. So you could be fighting him and not hear him. He could literally be right in front of you and you wouldn't hear his dialogue. For some reason, they removed the ducking instead of just extending it to like 50 or 100 yards or something. Just enough to where you can hear it at the world boss, but it's not disrupting the play. Now, another issue with the play is, again, you can disrupt it a bit. You can literally jump on the stage and start spamming crap all over the stage. Now, I wouldn't call it as big of an issue as the other two because you still hear the player mine, as long as the world bosses aren't engaged. And all as well. And now I want to talk about the events overall. The three events overall have terrible, terrible pacing. And by that, I mean you spend more time AFK than you'd actually do doing anything. Because the events are on a rotating timer to where only one is up at a time, and they rotate like this event's up, then this event, and this event's up. Problem is, there's a like 15 minute gap between one event ending and the next one starting. And the events only last about five minutes. So what you get in a situation to where you're literally do an event that takes five minutes, maybe 10 minutes with some of them like the mount off. Then you have to AFK for 15 minutes before you do the next event. And you basically come into a situation where one half or even two thirds of your time is spent AFK. 
This is reminiscent of the pre-patch event where you had the same problem where like you literally AFK in Dalaran waiting for something to do. Waiting should not be content. There should always be something available. The vents rotation should be immediate. When one vent ends, the next one should begin in one minute, not like 15 minutes. It should be bam, bam, bam. You should be able to participate in these events and not AFK. I spent the majority of my stream, and you can check the VOD. It's on this channel as well. The majority of my stream was spent at doing this event AFKing. Now, next thing, there's a Chromie scenario. This event is where you uh, queue into a looking for raid type thing, where you do a short scenario and still at this with Chromie, basically killing mobs for like 15 minutes. The problem? The queue time was about an hour. I'm not even being uh, exaggerative. It's getting in the VOD. I queued up for this, and I did like two full rotations of these events before the queue popped. Why? Because it requires three tanks and five healers to t uh, get into the queue. That is ridiculous. And do you know how many tanks we needed? Zero. I actually purposely didn't tank the end boss. I let him melee a hunter the whole time. The hunter never dropped below 50% health. There was no need for a tank. At all. They, want, they wanted three. We needed, we needed zero. I let the hunter tank the end boss, and that was the only one that even did any damage. Up until that point, nobody needed any heals either. Everyone's health didn't even move. Again, you can watch it in the VOD. I'm not going to really go through it all here, but to the stereo yourself, you'll see. Now, the end boss does do damage, but only by one move. He's got an AoE stomp that does a lot of damage, but most of it is avoidable. Like, little shockwaves come out, and if you get hit by it, and you're not a tank, you probably die. But that's the player's fault, not a lack of healing. If you don't, if you, if you don't get by the wave, you might drop to about 50% health. Okay, you need, you need one healer to top everyone off before our next stomp. You don't need five healers. And if they nerf the stomp for the sake of just improving the Q experience, that, and then they don't need any healers. They should just straight up take that and follow the Mr. Pandora scenario route where there literally is no rolls. No DPS, no tank, no healer. It just needs three bodies. Doesn't matter what they are. That scenario should be the same way. It just needs bodies. Instantly fill, instantly pop. You shouldn't have to wait an hour for tanks and healers you don't need. And I could say this argument is the same for all, all most world events at this point. It's ridiculous that you have to wait 10, 15 minutes for a tank or healer for Chemical Brothers on Valentine's Day for a boss that dies in 10 seconds. Like it's time for Blizzard to drop that mentality. The whole role system of, of conventional tank healer and dps applies to dungeons and it applies to raid they need to get that out of events and it needs to be done like 10 years ago it doesn't fit and belong here anymore it's needless queues for no reason and this scenario is no exception now, the last issue with this event the world bosses this zone has three this game lags like hell when one is engaged, one. This zone has three in the same zone. So you can imagine how bad this zone was. I showed you in the video in the transmog comp. People were running in place. Everything was lagging. They need to solve this. You would have the three bosses in the zone, but don't let them be engaged at the same time. What I would do is like to do with the events. Have a rotation. When Shaw dies, the next spawn is Doomwalker. When Doomwalker dies, the next spawn is Archivon. When Archivon dies, it goes back to Shaw. And the spawns can be immediate, so there's no wait time so the bosses will be like whack-a-mole now they could also have a system to where if no one engages the boss after a certain amount of time it automatically despawns and rotates every 10 minutes as well or something like that if it's not engaged that way you're not in a situation to where you know it's the middle of the night there's not much going on you need archivon but shaw's up and you can't get Archivon until Shaw's killed and then Doomwalker's killed to get to the Archivon in the rotation. Like, that would be bad. There would have to be a way. But, or they could just go into a system to where, like, if the server is not busy, it's 4 a.m., there's not many people around, then you can spawn all three at once. Like, but they have to have some kind of tech here to just go, hey, maybe during peak time on one of the busiest servers in NA, we shouldn't have three world bosses engaged at the same time and make the entire zone have unplayable lag? Like, common sense? I don't know. I think this whole event came down to a, a fundamental flaw of uh, scalability. 
every system was functional in its own right, in its own sandbox. Like if QA came in here and tested the the mount off by themselves, they didn't have other players disrupting them. They didn't have the server lagging because people were fighting the world boss. Or they went to the ribbons. They didn't have issues clicking the ribbon because there weren't 50 other people fighting to click the same ribbon. You know, these issues crop up because scalability wasn't accounted for in a design. And that's something that I really think is a miss by Blizzard. And I hope they take the lessons from this and actually build some kind of checklist. Actually, I've actually been saying this for a year. Because it's the same problem all the time. Make a checklist. World of Warcraft is an MMO. It's not just an RPG. It's an MMO RPG. Stop forgetting about the MMO part when you're making design choices with these systems because it causes problems with the player experience. Now, Blizzard should be quick to fix this, I hope. They didn't fix any of it day one, but day one is NA testing, and they're probably working on more stability issues first because they had other regressions in this past that I'm going to talk about in another video. But this is basically a summary of this event here. And needless to say, I think it's a, overall, it's a pretty cool event. I'm glad they added it. But these issues need to be heavily addressed. I hope you enjoyed watching the NA beta test experience. To all you EU players waking up to this video to watch it, to see what you're looking in experience. This is it. Maybe you'll get hot fixes before you have to experience it. But we didn't get hot fixes day one. Hopefully day two for us and day one for you, they start knocking out these issues. And most importantly, uh, honestly, I think the biggest issue really is not the bug, but the whole uh, pacing. I don't think any event should involve AFK. That's not content. That's all I have to say in this video. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next one.